Hello everyone. So today uh, in this video, uh, I would discuss about biopolymers. So the name itself suggests they are polymers having bio origin. And what are polymers? I guess you remember poly means many and more means part. So which is having many part which are monomers. The monomers combine together to give you this large molecular weight polymer. And if the polymer is having bio origin that it is produced by the living organism, the polymer is known as biopolymer. And obviously you may call it as a natural polymer too. So basically biopolymer is a natural polymer. Now if you like want to uh, divide biopolymer uh, on the basis of maybe the functional group they have or the structure they have, they are basically uh, three uh, types of uh, biopolymer wherein you could have polynucleotide first uh, wherein uh, the monomers are obviously nucleotide and you can remember the example of RNA DNA in this category. Uh, then second uh, would be polypeptide type of polymers wherein uh, they are proteins and the monomers are like amino acid. Then third type is polysaccharide and polysaccharides are nothing but carbohydrates. So right now today in this video I would focus uh, about polysaccharide biopolymer only. So let us go ahead with carbohydrates here you have many examples but today we are going to cover only starch and cellulose. Starch and cellulose are uh, the two uh, polymers which I am going to cover. Uh, especially if you uh, see starch, starch is further uh, again a polymer which is having uh, the monomers uh, like amylose and amylopactin. <coughs> Amylopactin is present in 80% amount and amylose is present in 20% uh, amount. Basically they are uh, obviously they are also polymers and they both combine to uh, give you this entire polymeric network which is uh, starch and uh, the amylopactin is basically uh, soluble in water while amylose is not soluble in water. Amylose is a linear chain, amylopactin is a branched chain. So uh, if you want to uh, see the detail, uh, let us first go ahead with starch and then we'll go to cellulose. So one by one. So what we are going to do is uh, to see how does a starch look like and uh, as I said there are two monomers, amylose and amylopactin. <coughs> So basically to start with, uh, I hope you know this, uh, that uh, where do we get starch from? Obviously it is found in human diet and there are many uh, grains like rice, wheat, potato, maize, etc. They contain good amount of uh, starch and as I said again that amylose is 20% uh, present and it is water soluble and 80% of the portion is water insoluble which is amylopactin. Uh, there are many uses of starch as such starch is not that uh, strong in strength. So it is always uh, blended with the fibers. The fibers are blended in the polymeric matrix to make it uh, strong and uh, good in strength. So uh, the uses would be in light uh, weight kind of thing only. Like in food processing thickeners and stabilizers definitely you can uh, found the amount of starch. In pharmaceutical industry it is having very good application as a table uh, like tablet binder. So whatever tablet you get like uh, you might have seen over the tablet there is a coating maybe sometimes it is colored and uh, sometimes it is like uh, uh, you can see that inside there is white tablet but outside there is colored coating that coating normally it is of starch it acts as a binder for the tablet and the moment you take it inside the body it get dissolved so for proper dissemination of medicine this is starch coating helps a lot and it is used in paper sizing also and fermentation of alcohol so now uh, let us go ahead with how do you draw the structure of starch so first i go with the structure of cellulose uh, like sorry uh, not cellulose amylose yeah so we are going to discuss about amylose then second uh, we'll discuss about amylopactin and then commonly we'll discuss about starch so up till now you know that the starch contains these two uh, polymeric units now amylose is like when you uh, blend it uh, it is alpha c1 to c4 blend it means uh, you have to blend the glucose unit so uh, I guess if you remember uh, the glucose uh, unit, uh, it was like if you want to draw the structure, there were like uh, six carbons you can write like CHO here. Then uh, you have four uh, carbons like this and at the end you had CH to OH. Then you had OH, OH, H and OH and uh, like this. 
if OH is here, then H would be there. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is the glucose unit. And I hope you remember from this uh, carbon to this carbon, there was a linkage like CHO. If we were to uh, write like this, there was a glycosidic bond. This oxygen, which is present at that, is connected like this, right? So this uh, way, glucose molecule can be drawn in a ring structure. Now the same thing you have to draw. Now I'll tell you how to draw it. You just have to draw a benzene kind of structure, like a six-membered kind of structure. But here you have to make a carbon. Then you have to draw the bonds like this. So now you can see, uh, you can see the ring structure. Now we have to fill this OH, OH, H, OH kind of thing. So we'll start with the first. Uh, here you have to write OH, then OH, then H, then OH. And uh, obviously if OH is uh, here, then you have to write H, alternate H. If H is here, you have to write OH and H. Obviously the last carbon is CH2OH. So you have to write CH2OH here and H here. So this, uh, if you want to name a uh, number uh, this compound, uh, let me show you the numbering also. So carbon number one, carbon number two, three, four, five and six. Here also you can see one, two, three, four, five and six. So there is a direct connection between first and fifth carbon. And this is uh, what we are talking about this glycosidic bond. So there is an oxygen here. Now I think you have understood how to represent this glucose moiety in this type of structure. Now let us go ahead with the polymeric unit. So what do you have to do? You have to draw it two times. Again, how to draw? You just make a six membered ring. Just bear with my drawing. Uh, focus on the main part uh, it may not be that much good but just trying to make you understand so we'll start from the right first carbon uh, what the sequence is OH OH H and OH and obviously opposite when there is OH here you have to write H H OH and H what about fifth carbon at the fifth carbon the sixth is CH2OH attached and here it is H. Now you have to combine these two glucose units one monomer of glucose and one monomer of uh, this. As I said it would be alpha C1 to C4 linkage and then there is release of minus H2. So now uh, at C1 to C4 so this is the fourth carbon of this uh, unit and this is the first carbon of this unit. So obviously uh, they are going to react. And then there is release of H2O. So now if you would like to draw this structure, uh, I'm drawing it uh, at the bottom now. So how are you going to draw? Uh, obviously again six membered ring and then followed by one oxygen in between. Then draw the bonds like this. Then uh, start writing what? OH, OH, H, OH. So let us start drawing that. OH, OH, H and OH. Now what? Here OH, so H, H, OH and H. And here you have to write CH2OH. The same pattern goes with one more chain, right? So oxygen and one more time bonds. Then again start with OH, OH, H, OH, H, CH2OH. Here H, H, OH and H. And now if you remember I said 1 to 4 linkage. So how are you going to show this? You are going to show it like this. Right? Because there is a glycosidic bond here. And this is how you are not uh, say it in terms of uh, polymer. So you can see that uh, this oxygen you may show it like. Because this is the first carbon. This is the fourth carbon. This is first and this is fourth. So if you want to continue the chain it would go like this only right so in between you may have one uh, n type of monomer and then you can continue the chain or as of now let me continue like this so this is what amylose looks like alpha c1 to c4 linkage one carbon of one monomer and fourth carbon of another monomer now if you can see with this uh, amylose is nothing but a linear uh, polymer here now coming to amylopactin 
let us uh, revise amylose first uh, so that you don't get confused and then I'll show the amylopactin. Now this is what the structure which I have got and this is what I wanted to show. Now you can see uh, the linkage is here, first carbon and this is the fourth carbon. This is fourth carbon, this is first carbon and this chain goes on. So this is how you need to show the alpha linkage of C1 to C4 and I think you will remember this OH, OH, H, OH. Okay, so now let us go to amylopactin. Now in amylopactin, as I said, is alpha C1 to C6. Uh, I think you also can try along with me. I am drawing here, but I think uh, you also should try. So let us uh, draw the structure one more time. And uh, let us have this OH, OH, H, OH. And here it would be CH to OH, H, H, OH, H. Now for that you have to draw it just below it. Alright. So again one more glucose unit you have to draw let's say like this and then OH, OH, H, OH, H, 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 OH and H. Now as I said it is alpha C1 to C6. Now uh, what is the first carbon? Obviously, the first carbon is, uh, you can now identify, right? So, this one is the first carbon, this one is the sixth carbon. Now, alpha C1 to C6. So, obviously, this is going to uh, be released like this, right? Minus H2O. So, there will be a direct bond at uh, the bottom. So, if you want to uh, draw it, you if you want to show it, you have to draw it like this. The bond is coming down directly to oxygen to which CH2 is attached, which is already attached to one more glucose unit and like this. So if you want to show the polymer, you have to write it like this CH2O which goes on like this and here also oxygen which goes on like this, which is connected to CH2O. So I think now you can make it like this is a branched polymer. So that is how uh, starch is a cross-linked polymer. Now let me show you one more time. If you remember, this is your amylose and if you remember, this is your amylopactin. So here you can see the branching and here you can see the linear chain. So amylose and amylopactin combine together to give you this cross-linked network of starch. So that is how the, uh, the starch structure is quite complex. But I think uh, you can now draw the structure of at least amylose, uh, which is a linear polymer here and amylopactin and uh, don't forget where you are supposed to draw the link I hope you remember C1 to C4 right and here alpha C1 to C6 very good all right so now we'll go to uh, uh, next polymer which is nothing but cellulose cellulose also I think you know it is found in wood and plant fibers and all and it is insoluble in water and it is a non-reducing carbonate uh, but carbohydrate uh, major uses are uh, for supporting the framework and rigidity to plant uh, this is quite rigid in its structure in comparison to that of starch because in a starch it is having both linear and you know uh, cross link kind of structure so uh, here in cellulose it is only linear so what happens is uh, the stacking or the packing is very close that is why in comparison to starch uh, in mechanical strength this is quite strong while in starch you have to blend it with the fibers now here what happens is beta c1 to c4 now what is the change is change is at the first carbon the change is at the first carbon this is the first carbon this is the fourth uh, carbon of this now i hope you remember uh, this structure now let me show you one more time uh, if you have to draw it like this, see, I hope you remember what was the sequence, OH, OH, H and OH. Now you complete the structure like this. Fine. Now I have to draw one more uh, monomeric unit. Very fast, very quickly. I hope now you uh, remember the sequence and you will not make a mistake while drawing the structure right H H and H now when I say it is beta C1 to C4 for cellulose now what difference does it make uh, do you remember the difference between alpha and beta 
I hope you remember it was on the carbon number one right so when we had this kind of structure i said here it is oh and here it is h and then we blended it with this right now if oh is at right or oh is at left that makes the difference so first carbon is anomeric carbon and what you have to do is at the first carbon you have to change the sequence so earlier it was oh oh h oh now you change the sequence h here and oh here similarly if you want to make it uh, to beta carbon you have to change the sequence like this rest all remains same rest all remains same so basically uh, this is first second uh, third and fourth and this is first second third fourth now again you have to uh, draw the link between c1 to c4 so now if you can see here obviously minus water will be released and then there is uh, sorry obviously uh, from here the water will be released right and that is how uh, the bonding looks like this so let me draw this right that is what the difference in amylose and cellulose so now if you go with the pattern it would be always like this and if you go to fourth carbon it would be like this so if i want to show the uh, the polymeric unit i can show it like this let us go back now i think you can remember and make it out that this is the carbon number one and now since oh is at up so you have to show it downwards and now this is carbon number four and since oh was at bottom you have to show it like this so in amylose it was like this kind of uh, glycosidic bond and in cellulose it was it is this kind of bond i hope now with that you will able to remember so uh, thank you everyone and i keep posting the videos to mention in the comment and to like uh, the video thank you so much